last class I gave a very brief introduction on the need for a cash flow statement and why that certain users of the cash flow statement would be interested in knowing the behavior of cash and to understand the behavior of cash I had told that the activities of a firm gets broadly classified under th three categories namely the investing activities, the financing activities and operating activities. Broadly these are the types of activities that have a direct impact on cash and if we are able to analyze the behavior of cash in these three activities, then we will be able to understand how cash is getting consumed and how cash is getting generated. Normally investing activities means those activities where you find that the firm is investing its money or uh, it will use money for buying a constructing plant, purchasing equipment or it can even lend money to other entities. These are all the investing activities of the firm or even it, if it sells its assets and gets money, disposal of assets and it gets money that is also an investing activity for the firm. The financing activities broadly are those activities that are related to the, the source of the capital for the firm. It can be from the loans or uh, shares. So, this can either bring in cash or consume cash. Same thing here, consume or generate. So, if I get a loan, I get cash for the firm. If I repay the loan, cash goes outside the firm, but still it is a financing activity. If I pay dividends to my shareholders, it is a financing activity. For the purpose of understanding a cash flow, payment of dividends to shareholders is classified as a financing activity. And broadly, any activities that do not come under this investing or financing will come under operating activities like your accounts payable, your accounts receivable, inventory, all of these comes under your operating activities. So, these are broadly the three types of activities which will change the behavior of cash and by studying the behavior of cash under these three type of activities we will be able to generate a cash flow statement. Now, how do we do that? Your income statement as I told you gives the net income for the entity, the net earnings that is available to the firm, the free cash that is available to the firm. So, your net income is one that would have taken into account all the operating expenses, the interest expenses, the depreciation, the income tax, everything and finally, is the net income. From the income statement, you will be able to calculate that. Now, let us for example, say that I want to understand the behavior of cash and I have already told you that this net income is not cash. So, by saying that I have 10 million rupees as net income, it does not mean that in the balance sheet cash is 10 million. I have repeatedly told to the class that both are totally different. Then how is that from this net income, I can relate with the opening cash and see what has happened to the activities that have either consumed cash or generated cash. And then see whether from the opening cash, 
the net income and understanding these activities that have generated or consumed cash can I arrive at the closing cash that I see in the balance sheet. Now, let us for example, say the accounting period is the 1st of April 2011 to 31 3 2012, which means I have a balance sheet, I have an income statement. Now, the net income as on 31 3 2012 and I have a balance sheet for 31 3 2012, which has a closing cash, both are not same. Now, is it possible for me to start with the net income for this year and understand what has happened to activities that have either consumed or generated cash during this period 1st April 2011 to 31 3 2012 and then add that with the opening cash that is cash at the end of 31 3 2011 plus all these activities that have influenced the behavior of cash plus the net income during this accounting period. And when I do this, I will find that the summation of all this is the cash at the end of 31 3 2012. And if you are able to do that in the process, you have created a cash flow statement. It is not as easy as I explained for you to understand what it is. So, let me just give you an example and then take you through that example, so that you will understand this better. Now, look at this, you look at the balance sheet between two successive periods as I told you before 31 3 2011 and 31 3 2012. Look at this figure cash 230, 326, 96, which means the end of accounting period 2011 the cash was 230, the end of 2010 it was 326. So, the change is 96. What am I going to do by creating a cash flow statement? It is to understand how this change of 96 has happened and it could have happened in a variety of ways as simple as just cash 230, a bank gave me a loan of 96 and let us say this is in lakhs of rupees. So, 96 lakh of rupees and nothing happened to cash during the entire accounting period. So, 230 plus 96, 326 as simple as that we could have explained the cash flow. But reality in an accounting period of one year, it is not a simple loan that has brought in 96 lakh of rupees that explains this difference of 96, no. A host of some activities would have happened which would have changed the different accounts and the resultant of that change is this difference of 96. What accounts it could have changed? It could have changed the accounts receivable, it could have changed the inventories, it could have changed the equipment purchase, it could have changed in my investments or even in my liabilities side, it could have changed my accounts payable, it could have changed my debt profile. All this could have changed. So, we are going to understand how these have changed, <coughs> if at all they have changed and because they have changed, change could be either it could have consumed cash or could have brought in cash and because of this change, we need to understand whether cash has gotten inside the entity or left the entity. Now, let us for example, say plant and equipment end of 2011 it was 2000, end of 2012 it is 2350, the difference is 350. Now, the question is very simple, how do you explain the difference? The explanation can be in a variety of ways, again as simple as saying I just purchased equipment worth 350,000 and that explains the difference, this could be one explanation acceptable. A different explanation could be that I purchased equipment worth 800,000 and it was during this accounting period, I also disposed of another equipment 
that was worth uh, let us say 400, 450 or 500,000. So, I purchased a new equipment worth 850,000, I disposed an exi existing equipment worth 500,000. Now, that difference also explains the difference between these two activities explains this difference of 350. Or it could be, you know, I purchased something worth 500,000, I disposed of an existing equipment worth 150,000. That difference also explains this difference 350. So, how do we know actually what happened? Then we will go to our account from the ledger, we will go to the account title this plant and equipment and see what has happened during this accounting period. And then we will see that an equipment, new equipment worth 500,000 was purchased and an existing equipment whose cost of acquisition was 150,000 has been disposed of and it is because of this that there is this difference of 350. And we are not stopping with that. We also find that the, the equipment whose cost of acquisition 150,000 was disposed, was not disposed at its book value of 0, but was disposed for let us say a value of 20,000. That also gets captured somewhere and sits somewhere in this balance sheet in cash. We will have to call out that and understand what has actually happened. And when we do that culling out, we are trying to extract cash transactions in all these balance sheet items between 2011 and 2012 or in effect I am trying to understand this change that has happened between 2011 to 2012, how that change has affected the behavior of cash. So, let us say I start with the opening cash of 230 and see how the behavior of cash has been affected because of all these transactions. And the summation of this with the opening cash should give me this 326. That is the purpose of today's class to understand how we do this and then in the process understand that this is actually the cash flow statement that we are creating. Just as I gave an example for the equipment, let us say for example, I see this long term debt 500, end of 2012 it is 835. To a layman who does not know cash flow statement, I look at the balance sheet, the immediate interpretation that I make from the balance sheet is that my long term debt at the end of 2011 was 500,000, the long term debt now is 835,000. So, the difference is 335. In the absence of any other information, I would safely assume that I have borrowed 335,000 more and that is an acceptable interpretation. But then if I again go deep into the ledger, the account copy of long term debts, I find this 500,835, the difference of 335 is not because I brought, I, I got in a fresh loan of 335, it could be because I got a fresh loan of 375,000. and that I already repaid to the extent of 40,000 of an existing loan and this difference is this 335,000. So, proceeds from new loan is 375,000, payments on existing long term debt to the extent of 40,000 explains this difference of 335. Likewise, every change will have an explanation for it and that explanation will explain the behavior of cash associated in each of this change. And that could happen in accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, long term debt, short term debt, disposal of assets. So, in all this, there is some behavior in cash that gets changed. And if you are able to track that behavior, and match it with the opening cash to understand the change, then you will be able to track the entire cash flow information in that accounting period and it is that tracking of 
information related to cash that I am interested in knowing in the form of a cash flow statement. In the absence of which, just looking at the balance sheet, I cannot know what has happened. Let us say I wanted to know financing activities. I look at the balance sheet. As I told you before, I just know that the difference is 335,000. That is it. I do not know how I got this 335,000. Suppose I want to know operating activities. I just know that the accounts receivable has changed this much, the accounts payable has changed this much. But I do not know what has happened that has caused this change. And it is that very specific information on what has happened is that I am interested in and that is why I create a cash flow statement. Now, let us begin to understand this by starting to prepare a cash flow statement. Statement of cash flow for 31 let us say 2012. Right? Now, the net cash flow from operating activities. I told you there are three sets of activities, operating activities, financing activities, investing activities and we are going to see how cash has behaved in all of these three activities and let us begin with operating activities. Now, I begin by first writing the net income which is not available because I have just given you the balance sheet figures. Let us say the corresponding net income at the end of 31 3 2012 was 200. Okay. 200 is the net income. Now, what I am going to do is from the net income, I would be adding or subtracting the cash value of those activities that have either generated or consumed cash from this net income. And then after I do this, add it with the opening cash as on 31 3 2011. And when I do that, if we have done that correctly, the answer will be the closing cash that you see in your balance sheet as of 31 3 2012. And this statement that we did to do this is your statement of cash flow. Now, when we begin with the net income for that particular year, we always start the cash flow by first adding back the depreciation for that particular year. Now, let us say the depreciation for that particular year was 120, that again I have not given you the balance sheet, but the example that I have taken is a real example and in that the income statement I find that the depreciation is 120. depreciation added back. Now, this is an important thing that you will have to understand. For the purpose of an income statement, I have recorded depreciation as an expense. Why? Because when I record depreciation as an expense in the income statement, it reduces the taxable income. To that extent, I am treating it as an expense. 
contrast that with other expenses let us say wage or salary or utility that also reduces the taxable income. Then what is the difference between these two? Why is that I am adding back depreciation for the purpose of cash flow statement while I am not going to add back wage or utilities? The wage or utilities all this have consumed cash. It has been a real cash going outside the entity and that I have already factored in my income statement and it is only from that that I started with this net income of 200 that is already been factored and those, those are real cash outflows. Now, this cash flow statement I am interested in understanding only about the real cash outflows and real cash inflows because I need to know only those activities that have really consumed or really generated cash. Has depreciation expense created a real physical outflow of cash? No, it has not. Then is it a cash outflow for the purpose of creating the cash flow statement? No, it is not. And that is why I am adding it back to the net income because a depreciation expense is a non-cash expense. And all non-cash expenses which have been treated as expense for the purpose of income statement to reduce taxable income gets added back to the net income when we calculate the cash flow statement. And the first classic example of a non-cash expense is depreciation and that gets immediately added back to the net income when we actually calculate the cash flow statement. So, I add back depreciation. Now, come to accounts receivable. So, what is your accounts receivable in your balance sheet? 610-657. The accounts receivable is 610-657. What is the change? Sorry, accounts is 586, 673. Inventories is 610, 657. 586, 673. Change is 87. So, have this in your mind. The change is 87. The question here is. Accounts receivables is an activity that has changed the behavior of cash. How has it changed? It has changed by 87. That is very evident from the balance sheet. The previous year closing accounts receivable was 586, now it is 673. 87 is the change. Now, is this change a cash inflow or a cash outflow? That is the question for the purpose of cash flow statement. An increase in accounts receivable, is it a cash inflow or a cash outflow? Remember, accounts receivable is something that the firm has to get. Now, if there is an increase in the value of an account, an account of accounts receivable type where I have to get money. Today, I have to get 50. Tomorrow, the change happens in such a way that I have to get 100. There is increase in the amount that I am supposed to get. So, is that a cash outflow or cash inflow? That is a cash outflow. Why? Because I have not got certain amount. And that amount that I am yet to receive has increased during this accounting period. It has changed to x plus delta x. x I have not received. x plus delta x I have not received. So, delta x is a cash outflow or cash inflow? It is a cash outflow because I have not received that amount. So, this 87 is a cash outflow. So, you must understand what I am trying to do here is take each of this account categories 
see the difference and then analyzing difference whether it is a cash inflow or a cash outflow. If it is a cash inflow positive, cash outflow is negative that is all. Accounts receivable has increased and if it is an increase in an accounts receivable then it is a cash outflow. Why? Because it is an amount that I have not received that has increased. Next is inventories. Look at the difference in inventories. If you go to your balance sheet that I gave you as an example, 610, 657, 47. This is a straightforward explanation. 610 end of previous accounting period, 657 end of this accounting period, difference is 47 and the difference is in inventories. The value of the inventory has increased, no doubt. Now, why has it increased? Because you paid cash. It has increased. Cash has gone out. And that is why you got in worth inventory, an incremental inventory worth 47. Or you would have created an accounts payable that has resulted in an incremental inventory of 47. That still explains that there is either a physical outflow of cash or an increase in liability, which is also treated as an expense that has caused this change. So, inventory has changed by an extent of 47, it has increased, which means there has been a cash outflow to that extent. Next is accounts payable. Again, go to your balance sheet, accounts payable is in your liability side 332, 388, the difference is 56. What was applicable to accounts receivable is exactly applicable in the opposite sense to accounts payable. In this case, we find that the difference is 56. Accounts payable has increased y plus delta y, delta y is 56. If your accounts payable has increased between two successive accounting periods, the amount that you have to pay to some vendor that you owe to a particular vendor has increased. The fact that the amount that you owe or you are supposed to pay to a vendor, if that has increased, it means that there is an internal cash generation. The fact that you have not paid and the amount that you have not paid is increased between two successive accounting periods is an internal cash generation and that is why increase in accounts payable is a cash inflow and hence this difference of 56 is recorded as a cash inflow. <coughs> Same is the case with tax payable, if you look the difference is 1. So, it is a payable account, so increase in tax payable is 1 and deferred taxes also, the difference is 5, increase in deferred tax. Now, what is the net cash flow from operating activities? net cash flow from operating activities, 320, 48. So, this is your net cash flow from operating activities to 48 positive means the operating activities have generated cash worth 248,000. Now, let us come to investing activities, cash flow from investing activities. Let us begin with the first example. I gave you that you know 
buying plant equipment, disposing plant equipment is an investing activity. So, go to your balance sheet and see the difference in the plant and equipment that we have created during this accounting period. So, it is in your asset 2000, 2350, 350 is the difference. So, 2000, 2350, so acquisition of plant and equipment. Can I write 350 here as a cash outflow? No. Why? Because I qualified the difference when I went back to my account ledger, pick this account plant and equipment, I found that during this accounting period, 150,000 worth of existing assets was disposed for 20,000 rupees and new assets worth 500,000 was purchased and it is that difference is this 350 that I came to know only when I saw the account. So, now for the purpose of cash flow that particular account category plant and equipment now explains that I have purchased new equipment worth 500,000 and proceeds from disposal of existing asset that is your 150,000 worth asset gave me 20,000 worth cash, cash inflow of 20,000. Next investment activities, let us say I, I also invested some money in outside investment securities. So, investment securities you go to your balance sheet you find that the investment securities difference is 50. Now, what does this mean? The difference is 50. It means that the value of the investment securities that I hold today 450 is 400. The value that I held one year back was 450, which means I have sold some of the securities that I have to generate cash of 50. Do not get confused by this negative 50. This explains this, this 50 is a reduction in the value of the investment securities. That does not mean that cash has actually gone out. In fact, in this case it means the opposite. A reduction in value of investment securities means suppose you had a deposit and then you the deposits get retired and you do not renew it, you surrender the deposit, you get cash for that. So, in your balance sheet the next year the value of the deposit gets reduced to that extent, but you have got cash. So, it is a cash inflow. Now, but what has happened when I went into the account from the ledger to see what has happened to investment securities, I found that the explanation for this difference of 50 is not because I retired 50,000 worth investment securities and got 50,000 because of that. It is because I purchased new investments I purchased new investment securities worth 25,000. So, I have purchased new investment securities cash outflow and proceeds from sale of investment securities was 75. Now, you see that explains the difference 75 minus 25, 50 in your balance sheet. So, a net cash inflow of 50. So, what is the net cash from investing activities? Net cash from investing activities is 525 and 95, 430. What does this mean? That when I did a quick analysis of all investing activities during this period, I find that the investing activities have consumed the cash 
a net conception of cash because of investing activities is 430,000. So, you have this in mind again. Where in your operating activities, it generated 248, in investing it has consumed 430. The next thing, cash from financing activities. Again, I go to my balance sheet. What are my financing activities? Could be short term debt, long term debt or I, I issue stocks, pay dividends. These are all financing activities. So, let us say I go to short term debt. So, what is my short term borrowings? The change is 21. Now, if the change is 21, does it mean that I have repaid 21,000 worth existing short term borrowings? Because you see that it is 147 and it is 126, which means my short term borrowings have reduced, which means I have repaid. In the absence of any extra information, it is correct to assume that I have repaid 21,000 worth existing short term debt, but I say no. You go into your ledger and pull out the account short term debt and see whether something more than this 21,000, it is not just that 21,000, something more has happened and the resultant of all that has happened is this 21,000. So, I go to that account and I find that I actually borrowed new short term loans, proceeds from short term debt, I borrowed 15,000 and then payment for existing short term debt. I paid 36,000 worth existing short term debt and it is this difference 36 minus 15 is that 21 that we saw just a, a few minutes back in the balance sheet, that is the difference of 21. So, a short term debt in this you find that there is a cash generating activity, there is a cash consumption activity both related to short term debt and the resultant of that is a cash conception of 21,000. Likewise, long term debt, I purchase proceeds from new long term debt is 375. Payment for existing long term debt is 40. So, 375 minus 40 is what? 335. Now, this 335 should be in your balance sheet. Let us see whether it is correct. 500, 835, 335 is in your balance sheet. Now, without looking at the balance sheet itself, I went to the account category long term debt. I found that there were a lot of activities, in this case two activities, one that actually brought in fresh loan worth 375, another long term activity where an existing long term debt worth 40,000 was paid, 375 minus 40 is 335 and it is this 335 that appears as the difference in your balance sheet. Now, let us say I also raised capital through stocks, this how did I know? I went to the accounts stocks and found that proceeds from new stock, issuing new stock is 44, which means I raised a capital by selling shares 44. Then when I go to the account statement, I mean balance sheet, I will find in the shareholders equity, there is this difference 44. I issued <coughs> new stocks worth 44,000, 10,000 of which was at par and 34,000 was the additional paid in capital. That brought in 44,000 to the firm, it is a cash inflow. Did I pay dividends? Yes, in an income statement from the 200 net income that was available, let us assume that dividends worth 60,000 was paid. So, dividends paid is cash outflow. So, 60 is the dividend that is paid. This information is available to you. So, what will be the net cash 
from financing activities. 1536, 375, 298, 298. So, what is the net cash from net cash from all these three activities that is net cash from operating plus investing plus financing. So, it will be 298 plus 248, 298 plus 248, 546, minus 430, that is your investing activities as consumed cash. So, 6, One sixteen. So, the net cash is 116. So, what does this mean? It means that in this period between 1st April 2011 and 31 3 2012, a lot of things have happened to various accounts and because of that cash has moved out or cash has come in and we have captured all those activities and understood how much cash left or how much cash got into the entity. And the summation of all that is your 116, which tells that the net increase in cash and cash equivalence because of all these activities during this accounting period is 116. Now, let us for a moment assume that I did not give you the balance sheet for 313 ending 31 3 2012. I gave you a balance sheet for 31 3 2011 and I told you that during the period 1st April 2011 to 31 3 2012, a lot of things have happened and finally, the cash available end of 31 3 2012 is 116 can you tell me the total cash balance end of 31 3 2012. The answer is very simple, I just add the opening balance, which is the closing balance of 31 3 2011. In this case, it is cash at beginning of year is how much, if you go to your balance sheet. It is 230, right? Your cash at the beginning of the year is 230. Add it with the cash that has been generated during this year alone, it is 346. Technically, it should be equal to the closing balance or the cash that you see in the balance sheet end of 2012, it is 326, but what do we get here? 346, how do we account for this 20,000 is the question. I leave this class with this question in your minds go back and revisit this exercise and tell me how do we account for this 20,000. That is the assignment for you for this class, because strictly in a cash flow statement, when we calculate the net effect of cash, whether it is cash consumption or cash generation during an accounting period, that net result plus 
the opening cash at the beginning of this accounting period must be equal to the cash ending that accounting period. It must and I have not done anything wrong and whatever we have done now, there is absolutely no mistake. We have done everything meticulously, but then our summation here shows that the closing cash must be 346, while well, the balance sheet shows it is 326 and I am telling you that the balance sheet is correct. Now, how do we account for this difference of 20,000 is a question that I would like to leave the class, the answer for which you will get when we meet next. Thank you.